Hello folks, thanks for joining us. It's the 23rd of March. Ah. I've got here these, um, these uh, garlic keeper pots that we did, which I'm just, just having a look at actually for the first time right now, since we, um, since we did, since we did them. Um, so let's just bring the camera down here a little bit, a little bit, so we can see what I'm up to. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I threw, I can't even remember how much they were. I think they were a couple of pounds. Um, the lids seem to be fitting okay. So what we're going to do now is is fit, fit up these lids and finish these off. And I'll show you how I think I'm going to do that. So let's go. Ah. So the idea, you see, it's got a little bit of a, a flare out there at the top. So you can, your hand can get hold of it, you know, and bring it closer to you. Now these garlic pots I've not really done um, like the other one I showed you with the sort of indentations, try to make it look like a garlic. I'm not trying to do that with these. These are just basically straightforward little uh, storage jar. So the lid doesn't need any trimming or anything. It, it, it's fitting pretty well. Um, I may just skim a little bit off the base here. So we just wet the rim like that and dampen the wheel head. You don't want it sloppy wet, just damp it, put it face down like that and give it a few taps like I'm doing and you'll soon find that you'll, 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 you'll get the bullseye, you'll get it in the centre. Okay? Now I know that some of you don't are daunted by tap centering but keep at it, keep practicing. Don't rely on mechanical aids, otherwise you will never train your eye. And that's the, what you've got to do in this pottery game is you've got to train your eye. You see. Now, if you if you if you all the time have crutches, how will you ever learn to walk? Likewise, if you're using mechanical centering aids, you will not ever learn to train your eye. So throw them away and determine that you're going to train your eye. Okay, so now the foot on this I'm not actually going to I'm not actually going to um, remove any material from the inside there because it doesn't need it, does it? We don't want to make work for ourselves by a lot of unnecessary trimming. Okay. So that's the body there pretty much done. I'm going to put that back in, tap center him again. You see, you see how useful tap centering is? It is, you use it all the time. So, so this lid actually want to just trim it a little bit there on the base. So I'm going to put him in there. Like that. See, you keep your finger on it like that. I'm doing this as much as anything just to just to lighten it a fraction. It doesn't really need a lot. It's just a little, a little tidy up, and we'll remove a little bit of a little bit of clay while we're at it. Okay. 
So things to bear in mind, or what's going through my mind as I'm doing this, is width, width here, can I get my hand in? Well, I can get it in fairly comfortable. When, when it's a little bit more shrunk, it'll be a little tighter, but it's not too deep, so I'll be able to easily pick out the garlic. Okay, the width, the outside width, will I be able to gra grab hold of it? Yes, I will. And we've now just tidied that up, so that fits. Okay, so what remains left to be done? Um, I think what we're going to do is, I'm just going to put him on here, just to raise him up a little bit. Are we in the picture? Are we in the picture? Yeah, okay. So I've got a couple of, um, of hole borers here. So there's this one, which is like a tapered one. And then this type, which is, makes a bigger, bigger hole. So, garlic keeper. So the whole point about a garlic keeper is it's a, it's a place to keep your garlic where uh, the air can circulate, you see. So you want to put holes that are going to promote air circulation. I think I'm going to, I'm going to put four holes here in the lid, you see. I'm just going to put them down through. Uh, this is now, this is now at the leather hard stage, you see. So I can use this hole borer. Punch through some holes. So when you're at any time when you're putting holes and you you want to think to yourself, well, how many holes do I want? Well, okay, I think I'm going to put four holes. So you do one. So then in the next one you want to do directly opposite that one. You see. So I put it one way, and then I turn it around. And I do it the other way because it's tapered. You see. Now at 90 degrees to that, so that'll be there. And last one there. Ooh, that one went off a bit, very slowly. I skewed that one a little bit, never mind. <laughs> Not really noticeable. So that'll look like that, you see, on, on the top. So that's gonna let the air let the, the air out. Now what I need to do is, using this bigger guy, put in some, put in some bigger holes. I'm probably thinking I'm going to be putting one here and one higher up. One, and then another one there. So that's that there, you see I've done those two. So again, we're gonna go right opposite those. Doesn't hurt to make a little mark, you know, when you do that. Like that. And one down there.
now at 90 degrees to them, about there, and about there. Trying to get them about the same height, you see. Okay, I think that's it. What I'll do is when these are a little drier here, I've got a, a like a deburring tool. See, they've got a little bit of a, they've got a little bit of a, a, a sharp edge to them there, where I've, where I've pushed the tool that the clay's come out of it. So what I'll do is I will uh, remove that sharp edge. La 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 la. So there it is. There's a little garlic keeper pot. Tell me what you think. Simon, that's rubbish, we don't like that. <laughs> well, that was the first one I did. It's a little, it was a little heavier actually than this one. It's often the way, you know, when you make things for the first time, the first one you've made, at least I find, uh, sometimes is not your best one, because you're sort of, you're not really pushing the limits, you're sort of just, maybe just experimenting a little bit with the with the um, with the amount of clay that you've got and the form that you've got you haven't really sort of decided maybe how much clay you really need so that first one was a little bit on the heavy side no I wouldn't say he was heavy he was robust <laughs> This one is a little bigger, so consequently, it, although it's the same weight of clay, but it feels therefore a little lighter, doesn't it? When you pick it up. It's like, it's practice, isn't it? Because every one you do, you see, is practice for the next one, isn't it? That you're going to do. And so you... Um, That's how you improve. So this guy again, just going to tap center him. Take my trim tool. Just remember, always, always leave the edges or the corners of your pots. Always remember to put a a bevel on the bottom here. Okay, never leave sharp, hard corners. You really want to make sure that you remember that. Um, yeah, so. So these, these lids like this, you see, you can actually use the pot itself as a, as a chuck to turn the lid upside down. Now I'm centering the whole thing with the lid in place, like that. Just tidying that up. Again, putting a little bevel there on that edge as well. Put in there like that, and burning the back. So one thing you could do if you wanted to be more, uh, you know, when you've got to put, I haven't got a pencil here, but if you want to be a little bit, you can just do a very faint line like that and another very faint line like that that's barely visible. 
And now using that to centre, you see your, your holes on, on that line. So those two, now the ones dead opposite and right on that line. You know, it's, 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 no matter how good you think you are, or how good you think an eye you've got, it's very easy, it's very easy to make mistakes, you know, it's very easy to put a handle or put a lug or punch a hole and then you go around the other side of the pot and you think, oh, I'll just do the same. And then you go, you know, you have a look at it and you think, oh, no, look, it's way off. Because, so, you know, you, you, you discover that you're not as clever as you thought you were. <laughs> so you can always put a little, a couple of guidelines like I've just done here. Now when it comes to fluting, for example, it's there you, you, you very, very easily go off, go off on a slant. <laughs> okay, so there's, there's that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little bur deburring tool, which I think I've got over here. You can buy these actually, this is not really for pottery. I'm not sure what it was for, but anyway, you, you see what it is? It's just a, it's just a, a bit that you can get with a lot of like uh, accessory tool bits, you know. And they come in they come in different sizes. So what I would do now, and I, I actually might, I'm gonna show you this, but I probably would be better to leave it a little bit till it's a little bit a little bit harder, but you can just go like this around where you've put your holes. You see? just to make a nice finish to the hole. I'll bring it up so you can see that. You think that looks a lot better? I do. It's just big enough, this. It could be a fraction bigger. I mean, I'm saying that, you know, in relation to the size of these holes, uh, this, this bit is only just big enough. So this is a storage jar really, isn't it? It's just been adapted for, for garlic. Um, and we, we might, on the inside, I'm not gonna be able to get this tool, you know, in there. So what you can do is, um, Got a, I got a special tool for this. <laughs> you can use a spoon, you see, and use it not like that, but turn it around like that, and use that then to scrape up and down against the the holes where you've got that bit of clay that is pushed through, and you want to get that off before they're bisque fired because if you don't. That will just be a sharp protrusion and you don't want that, especially if you're putting your hands down inside, you might, you know, you might cut yourself on a sharp bit of clay. So you want to make sure you get them all out. A spoon works pretty good for that. Another thing you can use a spoon for 
If this was a teapot body, for example, and we put a spout on here, and then we put lots of little holes, what you want to do is, again, before bisque firing, you want to take your spoon where all those little holes are on the strainer, you know, on the inside, and you want to rub this up and down there against the back of the strainer to take off all the rough bits of clay. If you do that, though, empty it all out and give it a good blow through before you bisque fire. So there it is, garlic keeper. Um, deburring the holes. Deburring is an engineering term, but I was an engineer before I was potter. So, but it's the, it's the same. It's exactly what we do in engineering. You know, with a uh, either with a file or with a sharp edge, you, you go around holes like that, make sure that they are got no sharp bits. It's all, it's all about finishing off, isn't it? And doing, uh, it's all actually, it comes under the one heading, good craftsmanship, pure and simple. Well, So these, these are nice and clean now. So what remains to do is the inside there, but I'm going to do that when it's a bit drier. Okay folks, thanks for joining me here in the studio, 23rd of March, Monday, here in Nilheim. Um, it's a sunny day, but it's cold. But spring is, is coming around the corner, I think. I'm going to be, I'm going to be for your interest, for your calendar maybe, I'm going to be in Philadelphia with Tomu Hamada. Hamada, Hamada's, uh, Tomu Hamada's grandfather was Shoji Hamada. And Shoji Hamada and my grandfather, my grandfather was Bernard, Bernard Leach, were, were great friends all of their lives. And together they had quite an influence on ceramics uh, in Japan and around the world. So anyway, um, we're having a one day get together workshop at the Clay Studio in Philadelphia. No, actually, I tell it, that's not correct. It's going to be at, it originally was going to be at the Clay Studio, but it's going to be now at the Tyler Tyler School of Arts, I think it is called. So, 12th of May, 12th of May, you can go there if you go to the Clay Studio website, Philadelphia. It'll give you details there. And um, it's just a one day get together, and it'll be kind of nice because we're both grandsons and we're both potters. We don't really know each other very well although we have met, but um, I don't think he speaks for, uh, any English and I don't speak any Japanese. So. <laughs> anyway, that's just for your interest. As well as that, I've got um, uh, workshops that we are going to be running here through this year, and the details of those you can see on my website, simonleachpottery.com. If you go there, you'll see workshop dates. If you want to come on a workshop here, we can only take about five people, so it's uh, you know it's a, it's a small it's in the, in my studio here. You know I've got electric wheels. You don't have to work on a leech treadle wheel, but you can if you want to, because we've got I've got a couple of them here. So you know anyway, some something there for you to think about. Uh, in the next clip, I'm probably going to be out in the kiln shed there doing some more on that kiln, repairing that chimney. Got them some things to show you there. Okay folks, well that's it from me. Keep practicing. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Dee, 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 dee. Ooh.